What's up, people? Piz out here, and I'm sure most of you guys out there who are familiar with my channel know that I paint hockey masks. I've been painting hockey masks or Jason masks for about two or three years at this point. And ever since I started painting hockey masks, I've had countless people ask me to do a mask painting tutorial video. And I've hesitated at doing so because there are literally dozens of how to paint a Jason mask tutorial videos out there. But I finally decided to go ahead and do so. But today I just want to give you guys the basic how to steps that could get virtually anybody on their way to painting hockey masks. Now, the very first thing that you need is, of course, a hockey mask. Now, shout out to my buddy Jeff who sent me this mask. He wants me to convert this mask into a Friday the 13th Part 5 mask. Now, this is just a standard um, cheap Chinese made hockey mask. These are the perfect starter masks when learning how to paint hockey masks. Now you can pick these up on eBay in bulk. They come from China, so it takes them a couple of months to get here, but you can pick these up for a couple of bucks each and the shipping is also really cheap. So I would recommend picking up no fewer than 20 to 25. They all pretty much look the same. They're about the same shape. You can get them in different colors. I usually went for just the blank white ones. Um, this one that Jeff sent to me is black with red chevrons. But irregardless, when you get the mask, the very first thing you want to do is sand the mask. That's step two, get you some sandpaper. Now, I like to start with the very fine sandpaper. And with most masks, that's really all you need is the fine sandpaper. And what you want to do is just sand off all of the shininess on the mask. So that way the paint will stick to the mask. Now with certain masks like the part six or the remake mask, for instance, I'll then go and get a much coarser sandpaper and really just scratch the mask up, which I think gives it a really nice texture. And of course it makes it look very scratched up as if the mask has been put through the ringer. Now from there, you're looking at painting the mask. Now what I'll do with this mask in particular and what I suggest you guys do with all of these cheaper Chinese hockey masks is to start out with a coat of gray primer on the front of the mask and on the back of the mask. That just ensures that the paint is going to stick to the mask, but it also cuts down on the translucence. So if you, if you just hold one of these masks up to the light, you'll be able to see right through it. But if you put that coat of gray primer on the front and on the back, that seals it up. So you don't have to worry about any kind of translucence. In the case of the part five, I'm using a satin ivory base color. Now I recommend the satin or the flat spray paint colors over a gloss color because from my experience, I've found that when you start to weather the mask, the paint sticks better to a satin or a flat base color than a glossy base color. From there, we turn to acrylic paints to do your washes. Now, in the case of the part five, I've got burnt umber, I've got burnt sienna, and I've got some raw sienna. Now, when it comes to weathering the mask and applying the acrylic paints to it, I recommend either using one of these guys, which is a sponge on a stick. I think they may be called spouncers or a sea sponge. And finally, after you've done all of your washes and all of your weathering and the mask looks the way you want it to look, you want to seal the mask. Now for this, I recommend a clear glossy spray paint or a clear glossy enamel that seals your work, that makes sure that all the paint is sealed and it gives the mask a nice shiny look. So again, with the sanding process, all you're really trying to do is get all of the shine off of the mask. You're scratching the mask up, you're putting some grooves in the mask, and that way the paint will have something to really, you know, grip. That way the paint will stick on the mask. So once the mask has been sanded and all that pesky shine is gone, now it's time to apply your base coat. So the base paint is dry. I've gone ahead and put the chevrons on. These are decals. I recommend the decals over taping off the areas and painting in the decals. That can be a real pain in the butt. The decals are a lot quicker. They're a lot easier. You can get them pretty cheap from JDF Studios. Definitely recommend 
the decals. I use decals on pretty much every single mask that I paint. Now I did make one goof when painting this mask. Um, when it comes to painting these Chinese masks, before you put on your base coat, I recommend getting some balloons, just party balloons, cheap little party balloons, and put them over the um, snaps on these masks. That protects them from getting paint on them. When you get paint on these, it's very difficult to put the straps back on. The, the snaps just kind of get, they get messed up when they get paint on them. What you do is you just have to go and scrape the paint off of the snaps in order for the straps to snap back on the mask without creating a problem. Because I didn't have any balloons, I just went ahead, painted the mask anyway, and I have scraped all the paint off of the snaps on this mask. Now at this point you're ready to start your weathering and when it comes to weathering I can't stress this enough. Always start light. Always start light. Let your first wash, which is how it's referred to in the uh, mask painting world, let your first wash be very very light. Then when you go over it again, make it a little bit darker. And then when you go over it again, make it a little bit darker. So that each wash kind of builds on the other one and you build up the dirt and the grime and the wear on the mask. And the weathering looks a lot more natural and a lot better than if you just slapped a heavy coat of paint on here and you know, there's your weathering, you're, you're done, you're ready to move on. Doing heavier washes as you go along definitely makes for a much better looking mask. But start light, then when you do your second wash, a little bit heavier, then your third wash, a little bit heavier, depending on what kind of mask you're doing. If you're doing like, say, a um, remake mask, I usually do four or five different washes because that's supposed to be a very dirty, grimy, nasty, worn mask with the part five mask i'm probably only going to do three or four washes and keep them more or less lighter washes now when it comes to part five masks there's a couple of different schools of thought um, for these masks i do know that david miller um, when he painted the, the mask for the film he used an ivory base coat and that um, he weathered the mask using washes of he used a combination or a mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber and then a wash of a very light wash of i think raw sienna but you see these masks especially the part five mask they vary wildly based on who's painting them. Uh, but I'm gonna kinda keep this one closer to uh, how Mr. Miller painted the mask for the film, and particularly more toward the first time you saw the mask. Instead of later on when Tommy finds the mask in his hospital room, it's pretty dirty, it's pretty messy, it's, it's, it's more of a very dark color. Um, I'm gonna keep this one a little bit lighter, but I'm definitely going to grime it up uh, quite a bit because I, for me personally, I know less is more a lot of the times is better. But for me, when I'm working on a, a hockey mask, it, it just, I don't know, it doesn't feel right in most cases unless it's got quite a bit of wear and weathering on it. Now, one of the last part five masks I painted, I went for more of a um, later in the film look, like when Tommy finds the mask in his hospital uh, room where I went with more of an almond base color. And then I really built up on it with uh, burnt umber, uh, melted chocolate and gray um, acrylic paints. Now, one of the things that I like about painting hockey masks is it gives me the opportunity to be creative. Now I wanna keep the masks looking as film, ac film accurate as possible, but I don't want to just paint the same mask over and over and over again. I mean, that's kind of boring. Um, so with every mask that I've painted, whether it be a part three, a part five, a part six, a part eight, they look like a part three, a part five, a part six, or a part eight mask, but no two masks are identical. One mask may be more weathered and more dirty than the other. One mask may have slightly more detail in it, then another, really, I just kind of leave it up to whoever 
I'm painting the mask for. So what I really want to stress here is just have fun. Your first handful of masks are probably not going to be that great, but you're learning. And I'm still learning. I've been doing this for two or three years at this point, but every mask I paint, and I've painted a number of masks at this point, but I feel like with every mask I paint, I learn something new, be it a weathering technique or whatever. I feel like every mask that I've painted has taught me something new about painting masks. But just have fun with it, be creative. For me personally, it's a great stress relieving activity to just sit down and focus on painting a mask. I forget everything that's going on <laughs> around me. I forget everything that's causing me stress in my daily life. And all I'm focused in on at the moment is this mask. I hope you found this mask making tutorial to be informative or interesting or entertaining. And hopefully it may have motivated some of you who are on the fence about painting these things to say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Because trust me, if I can do it, anybody can do it with a little practice. If you liked the video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace and happy painting. big thank you to all my awesome Patreon supporters. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for monthly live streams and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Patreon.com forward slash Pizal or follow the link in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.